So, Paul, we have a lot of things to get through to Mars. Now, we don't necessarily care about the reasons we're going to colonize Mars. We want to try. Okay. So, we'll just take for granted we want to go there. First obstacle is always cost. Yeah. Look, as we talked about lunar exploration, cost was a big part of it. Now, when we look at Mars missions, now, this is not human missions. These are some of the rovers that we've sent. So, firstly, the Viking probes. Uh, in the 70s, some of the first explorer Mars. And this is all adjusted for inflation. So. That's right. So this is all in the same units. Uh, and so the Viking missions adjusted for inflation were quite expensive. Now, the rovers that have just been sent, Perseverance, which landed uh, earlier in 2021, um, some of the earlier rovers, Curiosity, they're in the few billions of dollars. Yeah, these are much bigger rovers than these two, which is why they're more expensive, even though they're more recent. Yep. But nonetheless, the price of getting to Mars has gone down quite a lot in real terms, I'd say. For These rovers are far more capable than the Viking landers. Yeah, I mean, it, in pure just resolution of imaging, I mean, it's, you know, the detail is not even there. And if we think about some of the costs even for the moon, some of the moon missions, the cheap ones, were still a couple of hundred million dollars. Now, uh, a billion dollars is still obviously more than a, hundred, a couple of hundred million, but... Is it that much difference? Eh, depends, I guess, on who you ask. Yeah. How about sending people? Does anyone try to estimate the cost of that? Well, they have. And the only way NASA works is they have to get congressional approval for it. So if NASA is going to say, we're going to go send humans, those senators are going to say, well, what am I spending it on? And they did that. And it turns out there's a lot of stuff you have to spend on to get to Mars. Yeah, I mean, this is the reason why the cost. This is just a list of the different things that people would have to get right. And so you have to develop it, you have to test it, you probably have to develop it again, you have to test it again, you have to repeat. Yep. And we're yeah, also no, not... You can't read this, but let me yeah. read a few of the things here. So stage one, modified external tank, structure, hydrogen tank, oxygen tank, thermal protection, electrical systems, pyro safety systems, separation rockets, thermal controls. That's just this little bit here. And, and that's, every, so that's, every one of these needs a team of researchers and prototypes and testing. And that's where the money goes. The money goes into develop and test all these individual components. And just because you have someone working on the hydrogen tank, you're probably going to have a, someone who's different working on the batteries of the Earth reentry and habitation capsule, for instance. And that's going to be different from the design maturity cost margin. What that means is, well, things are going to get it more expensive over time. Now, this actually, in some ways, can be a plus in terms of getting funding yes. because these are all jobs. That's right. And if you look at where all the NASA centers are, they are all in marginal constituencies in the US. I mean, you ever wonder why Mission Control is in Houston? It's because they needed to get Lyndon Johnson's vote and he was the senator for there. That's right. So this is some reason why NASA's funding doesn't go to zero, even though we've got to the moon. It's because all these NASA centers are in key marginal constituencies and people don't want to lose all the highly paying jobs in that area. So the local senator will go in like crazy and say, please keep funding this. Yeah. And so this sometimes is, this is a plus. That's right. And this is actually why NASA is always getting bipartisan support from the Democrats and Republicans, because sometimes that Democrat holds that seat and he, they want to get reelected. Or the Republican holds the seat, they want to get reelected. And there's actually 14 different centers spread across 10 different U.S. states. So that means it actually becomes quite an appeal to keep all these industries, because not every center is going to do it. One may be building the engine and the rocket. The other will be focusing on the food or the ascent vehicle. So there's going to be spread around these constituents. That's right. But what was the overall budget figure they came up with? So as they started to, to get into this detail, what is the cost of batteries? What is the cost of the harness? All those sorts of things. They ended up with this. They did a European version of the costing. So Europe and NASA have always agreed to work on these things. So the Europe said, all right, this is what we would think it would cost. This is what NASA costs. Now, this is in thousands of dollars in 2002. Keeping in mind, this is when they started to do the costings for a future Mars mission. And I remember the history behind this, which was that every now and then a space agent would say, well, we've done the moon, what's the next big exciting thing? Clearly go to Mars. And some president or prime minister will say, OK, we will go to Mars. Give us a plan. And then the plan came with these budgets and they said, uh, let's go to an asteroid instead. Exactly. So NASA came up with a, a just shy of 40 billion in 2002, which adjusted for inflation today is 60 billion. Now, this isn't colonizing Mars. This is one mission to Mars. That's right. And the work needed to get there. So we're not talking about sending six missions like Apollo had. 
Multiply that number by six. Well, you wouldn't, because most of the cost is That's development, right. so exactly. you might only add another 10 billion to make it six missions. That's right. So maybe it's a cheat. Maybe it's a, a bargain. bargain. Ten, 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 five more missions for only $10 billion. Exactly. That's right. You know, that's how you get a, someone's vote. Except now, obviously, our knowledge of what needs to happen, that maturation costs, costs of going more expensive, and also, not just NASA's looking at this problem. So lots of groups have started to say, what could we do to get to Mars? What are our going to be costs? What would a Mars mission, again, this is still just the main part of the mission, knowing that future missions will be cheap. Yep. So you see out here the staggering large amounts of money proposed by a couple of NASA studies. But then there's a whole bunch of other people, the European Space Agency, an austere mission, presumably that's doing it on the cheap as much as possible. That's right. They don't, <laughs> they don't get fancy soap in their showers. On the, on the <laughs> this mission. is cutting down the trimmings. This is the budget airline. You pay for the baggage. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you could afford to pay for the baggage on one of these. No, no, that's right. Um, but then there's a number of other things which are much, much lower. I mean, it's hundreds of times less than this. So some people seem to be thinking we can go to Mars for much less than these staggeringly large ballpark 60 to 100 billion dollar costs. So SpaceX I see down yep. here, and the, um, it says over here who's actually done these things. A lot of these studies are actually much cheaper. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, uh, the Mars Society. But I think we have to actually now start to ask ourselves, why is it cheaper? Now, one of the reasons when NASA does this, they have to budget every single component. They're also budgeting that they are going to do every single component. That means the research, the development, the paying for the people, the testing, the safety. NASA is very cautious about human space. And very bureaucratic. I've worked with them enough times. That's right. <laughs> now, we're going to talk about all those issues that go into human space flight as part of the medicine section. But they say, all right, we need to solve all this. This is the realistic cost. It's not, as we've talked about, the technology. It's the people time that ends up being the cost. Now, Inspiration what Mars says, we could probably do it for not even a billion dollars. Choose us, choose us. But do you know how they are choosing to get most of their money? No. So Inspiration said, we don't need the US government money. We have the private sector. You know what the private sector is going to want? They're going to want to sponsor it. They're going to want a television program to see it. One of the proposals was to make it a reality television show that they can send ad sell ads. And as these people go to Mars, people are going to pay ad revenue. There's our money. We don't need anything for it because television ad revenue is going to do it as well. Is that probably a realistic business model to send someone to Mars? Well, if it only cost a billion, then I think there's a reasonable chance you could find some random billionaire who's prepared to fund that sort of thing. That's right. And it might be doable by advertising budgets. Yep. But is a billion dollars really a realistic price? Well, their assumption is we actually don't have to sort out the technology. These guys are going to sort it out for us anyways. So we just have a cheap mission. We're not going to invent the car. We're just going to slightly change a few things and then make our own. And this is where when we start to see some of these differences, these groups say, this is what we are going to build ourselves, and this is the information we're going to rely on. And this becomes critical components. When you need to research and develop the initial ideas, it doesn't come from nowhere. That costs people time. And what a lot of these private sector groups or other groups say is, well, we don't have to do it all ourselves. Someone's going to do it for us anyways. We can make it more efficient once it's established. So really, these missions that are costing $10, $20 billion are saying, the first mission happens anyways, and then we just make the subsequent missions cheaper. So you're relying on someone else to build large rockets that can take huge masses into, say, a high Earth orbit or something like that. And once that technology is done, and someone has to pay for that. That's someone has to pay for that. It's like the initial, very first space launches, yep. they were paid for because the technology to send uh, Yuri Gagarin or John Glenn into space is the same as that needed to send an atomic bomb to Moscow or Washington. That's right. And so they were able to piggyback off the much larger amounts of money being spent on sending atomic bombs around the world. So here you're assuming that someone else will work out how to build the launchers. All they need to do is build the Mars lander and transfer vehicle or something. That's right. And, and make it a little bit efficient and maybe not your austere mission. But we can look this into how the development of other space programs has happened. When we looked at this in the last section about the lunar uh, missions, we noticed that the Mercury mission in the yellow and the Gemini missions, the precursors of Apollo and adjusted billions of dollars were a small amount. Then all of a sudden comes the huge cash flow of the Apollo missions. But what was most of that money spent for? People, development. People, development. Yes. It wasn't again to develop the rockets, it was to do that initial research. And then they kind of coasted. But even things like the space shuttle and the space station still cost 
billions of dollars. When you're dealing with people and operations and all that other stuff, and someone initially has to pay for it and develop it, it costs money. And this is for around the Earth. This isn't Mars. This is in some sense a disaster. I mean, the cost of a kilogram of payload on the space shuttle was more than that on the Saturn V rockets. So for the space shuttle, they skimped on the early That's development right. costs, which meant it would cost a huge amount to run each time. That would have been far better to spend, move some of the thick blue line up front, spend a lot more money developing a reliable, cheap rocket, and then the running costs would be much lower. Because for you add up the total area under this curve, yes. the total amount spent on the space shuttle and the space station is probably more than that spent on Apollo. It's just spread over more years. Exactly, and that was one of the downfalls of the space shuttle was they didn't do that initial development, so you end up spending way more money on potentially non-successful. So if we go back to these costings, they're initially saying, oh, we'll probably be able to do it cheap, but they're not doing the due diligence in the beginning. So probably in the long run, they're gonna spend a lot more money operationally down the road than they would have in the beginning.